In this video I'm going to talk about noise coupling, uh, in particular noise coupling into your circuit. And I have in mind mostly a printed circuit board, but it would be any circuit. Uh, and you do obviously don't want noise in your circuit uh, coming from any kind of source. So first we need to, to generalize, uh, to, to develop a general model about noise coupling. First you have a noise source something that's emitting the source energy and it's useful to think in terms of energy as you walk through it. Uh, next you have a coupling channel, some mechanism by which that energy cup that noise couples into your circuit and then finally you have your receiver which is your circuit of interest, the, the one you're trying to protect. And you can sever or reduce the noise at any point along the way here and in good practice you should be trying to go for all of them. Uh, I'm going to go into some description about the main coupling channels for electromagnetic type of noise as I see it and some solutions for reducing them. But before I get into that, I want to mention uh, some assumptions that, that I'm going to make working through this. Uh, first of all, you can always use Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's equations, EQN. Uh, for solving any kind of electromagnetic problem in the macro world. Um, and that's going to apply to all of my noise sources except for one, and I'll, and I'll talk about that. Uh, but that's really too abstract uh, to, to really uh, develop some intuition about what you're going to need to pay attention to when you design printed circuit boards. Uh, in most circuit, uh, situations uh, in printed circuit board design, you can more easily consider what's going on by basic circuit analysis, basic circuit analysis here. And what I mean by that is something that meets these three assumptions. Uh, first of all, the, that all electric fields are confined within capacitors. Uh, that means to capture all the effects of electric fields in your circuit, all you need to do is worry about the capacitors. And capacitors, there's going to be some you know, voltage one, and maybe this is ground, and there's a separation distance d there. Uh, the capacitance is the dielectric constant times the area over the d for a parallel plate capacitor, and the electric field is just going to be v1 minus ground over d. So that's the electric field, and it's completely contained within the capacitor. The second assumption is that all magnetic fields are combined, are, are confined within inductors. So let me draw an inductor. So that means all of the electric, the magnetic field considerations you need to consider are, you can lump them together and model them as inductors. Um, so at the inductor, it's going to have a magnetic field that loops around. It's a magnetic dipole. Okay. The third thing is that the dimensions of the circuit are small with respect to lambda. And this is definitely not always true, especially when you get to high frequency design, uh, when you're talking about transmission line considerations or, or waveguides. But for considering noise sources, they're, they're often going to be lower frequency, not always, but uh, let's, as, let's assume that as I, as I go through and walk through the, this model, the model I've, I've come up with here. If all three of these are true, you can use the circuit analysis approach. Also, you can refer to it as the lumped approach, where you have lumped elements. Here's a lumped capacitor, here's a lumped inductor. And with that, I'm going to scroll down and show you my model for noise. It's nothing new. Um, and I'm going to tell you up front that I don't consider this exhaustive. It only covers the most common types of noise uh, that I think you'll run into, but it does cover a lot. Uh, and also you may argue with my categorization here, but I think um, the way I've organized it makes sense to me and there's some parallelism, some symmetry in it. Uh, that help uh, uh, help me remember it. First up, uh, well, first of all, let me tell you, we have the energy sources, the channels, the receptors, and mitigation. And you should you should think in terms of energy. I've seen people talk in terms of voltage or current or electric field, magnetic field, and really what you're worried about fundamentally is energy from some source foreign to your local circuit coupling into your local circuit and causing a problem. First up, the source of energy, uh, the thermodynamic process. And this is the only one of, of these five uh, uh, components that doesn't, that you can't solve with electromagnetic equations, uh, with Maxwell's equations. And by this I mean thermal noise, thermal noise, or contact noise. Uh, thermal noise has a white characteristic, it's frequency independent, and 
contact noise has 1 over f, and there are other kinds of thermodynamic processes here. And this is uh, this has to do with uh, electrons diffusing back and forth within a resistor, or between um, contacts, between uh, one kind of metal and another kind of metal, between one carbon patch and another carbon patch, uh, something that has to do with electrons moving through uh, a system. Uh, and I would say the channel for energy delivery in this case is any kind of discrete component that has a resistance. And mostly what you're going to be worried about is thermal noise, I would say. Uh, and that's directly related to resistance. In fact, it's proportional to resistance. The third thing here, uh, the receptor of the energy, and I'm going to call that the, the local circuit. And that's true for all of these examples. So let me go ahead and put quotes here to indicate that by the receptor of the energy, I mean the local circuit. Finally, how would you mitigate that this noise source? Well, thermo, for thermal noise, you would just reduce the temperature. Uh, also, you can reduce the resistance or change the kinds of resistors that you're using or kinds of components to reduce contact noise, um, and that's how you deal with it. Number two, I would say that the source of energy is another circuit sharing a conductive pathway with your circuit, and this is known as impedance coupling. So here I've drawn circuit one and circuit two, and let's say that, let me change my color, let's say they have a, a ground, the same ground that they're trying to get to, and there's some impedance R there, but both of them are coming out this way, so you have I1, the return current from circuit 1, and the return current from circuit 2, trying to get to that same common ground impedance. And this is going to be the ground voltage for circuit 2, and this is going to be the ground voltage for circuit 1. Now let's say uh, circuit 2 is shooting its current to ground. Well, that's going to raise the potential here, because V equals IR, this potential will raise, and that's going to cause a different ground to appear for circuit 2, which may affect the functionality there. Especially if you're dealing with analog components, this can be an important consideration. And things like this uh, would be uh, ground loops. Um, that's one example of uh, impedance coupling. And the only way you can watch out or, or mitigate uh, impedance coupling is to watch out for the path of the return currents. And that just uh, takes a, a attention to how you're designing your circuit um, and some thought to how the, the currents are, are going to occur in the circuit. Third, there's the electric field, a, a local electric field as a source of energy. Uh, the coupling channel is capacitive coupling, and I'm going to cover that in another video, so I'm not going to talk about it here. Uh, and the mitigation techniques uh, would be to reduce uh, the frequency of the, the, the electric field source, the varying source, reduce uh, some resistances, and that'll be covered in the, in the video. Uh, the coupling capacitor between you and the, circ the problematic circuit, as well as the, the voltage in the, the problematic circuit. Uh, the only one you really have a lot of control over is the coupling capacitance, and so you will uh, take into account some considerations, which I'll cover in that other video. The fourth thing is the magnetic field, kind of a local magnetic field, and the coupling channel uh, is the in, is inductive coupling, um, and I'm going to also cover that in another video. Uh, the only what you do for the case of mitigating magnetic field coupling is you would lower the magnetic field, uh, decrease area, decrease the frequency of the magnetic field source or the mutual inductance. And in practice, the only ones you're going to have much control over are the area and the mutual inductance. Lastly, uh, we have electromagnetic radiation, something that's coming from the far field, and instead of treating them differently as you would for breaking them up in electric field and magnetic field, you treat them together. And uh, wh what, are, what are some examples of, of capacitive coupling? Well, let's say you had this wire here for this circuit here passing through a noisy environment. It's going to pick up some voltage, which is equal to its effective length, times the electric field that it sees. Uh, so electric field is in terms of volts per meter. So you have volts per meter times meter, which gives you volts. And that voltage can couple into your circuit, maybe cause a current if it, if it occurs across an, an impedance, or uh, if in the case of it, it occurs across two different terminals that are not shorted together, um, it can 
couple noise voltage into your circuit. A special case of, of, of this would be an antenna where you have a positive terminal here, a negative terminal here. Uh, I've just defined it that way. The electric field is oriented this way and you have an RLC tank uh, in series with the resistor. At some frequency this RLC tank goes to uh, zero resistance or it hits resonance, so not necessarily zero, but very low resistance and that signal just feeds through and all of that uh, voltage that couples in uh, will appear across the resistor. Really the only thing that you can do to mitigate against r coupling electromagnetic radiation into your circuit from the far field is to shield your device and there you have to take into account reflection, absorption, and transmission which is really a different another complete topic and to a large extent you could shield your circuit pretty well uh, just with putting metal around it, uh, putting it in a metal box and you don't necessarily need to ground it because it's going to do a good job at reflecting and absorbing even even though you don't ground it but if you don't ground it you do run the risk of coupling that energy into your circuit uh, through capacitive coupling which would be this mechanism here um, and so you just should ground your shields that's good practice now I like this the way I, I've drawn things out here because uh, the way you can remember it is by the channel of delivery so first of all just remember discrete thermodynamic stuff and then the others, it's, it's pretty intuitive. There's impedance on this end and conductive coupling on this end. There's capacitive coupling and inductive coupling. So capacitance, inductance, uh, uh, conductance, and impedance or resistance. Uh, and by conductive coupling, let me touch on that briefly, uh, I mean uh, coupling where there's a metal involved. If there was a dielectric, an insulator, free space, uh, it the electromagnetic radiation would just pass through.